This video is going to be about uh, vehicle inspections. And so what we're going to do is uh, go tagging along with the other video that I did on filling out a work order. Uh, this one's going to go along with the same Suburban that we started with the work order. Uh, and so we're going to do a quick inspection on this vehicle. Now, this is probably going to take more time than it normally would to do a vehicle inspection. But in reality, whenever you do a vehicle inspection, it should take a approximately 10 to 15 minutes once you get proficient at it. The first couple of times you do it, it's probably going to be a little bit longer. So what we're going to do is, um, now it doesn't really matter what order you do the inspection in, as long as you're consistent and you do the same routine every single time. And that way you don't miss anything. We're going to go off from the work order and we're just kind of um, go down through the checklist. Now there are some things I'm not going to require you to do on a vehicle inspection uh, for this class, but there are some things that you will be required to do. Okay, so on the work order, over here on this side, we have a, a checklist of things that we're going to do. And then, like I mentioned in the other video, we've got the tire here, which we're going to look at tire pressure. We're going to look at the vehicle. Um, if we have an opportunity, we'll measure brake linings. Um, otherwise, we're just going to look at the vehicle and write down any scratch and dents. And then we'll also check the electrical system, the charging system, the battery. And what I usually do with this to start with is one of the, the items on the checklist over here is to check all of the lights to make sure that they work. Um, the dash lights especially because there's a lot of warning lights on those dash lights that you need to make sure that they do work. And so uh, you also have to check the horn, the uh, uh, wipers, and different things like that. You can do all that while you drive the vehicle in uh, to the shop. So it shouldn't be, uh, it should take very little time to do all that stuff. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with the inspection and then we'll come back and look at this work order in a minute. So to start with, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the dash lights when I first start the vehicle, when I first turn the vehicle on. So when I turn the vehicle on, you notice there's lights that show up all the way across the dash there. And that's called the wow effect. And what that does is it lets you know that all those lights are working. So you want to make sure that all those lights are on and working. And then once you start the vehicle up and you're driving it into the shop, Now's a good time to check the windshield wipers to make sure that they're working. So we check the delay to make sure that the, the delay is working. There it is. And we check the low speed, the high speed, and we also need to check the washers. And the washers work. So right there we've done um, quite a few of the checks and then we just tap the horn to make sure the horn works and we're finished with the inside so okay what you're going to need to do now is we're going to um, check all of the fluids in the engine compartment and so what you'll need to do is uh, it helps to identify where all the checkpoints are first and then go through and do it all so the first thing we're going to check is the engine oil which is uh, this little dipstick right down here so we pull it out wipe it clean Put it back in. And we look at the oil on here. It should be right up in those, those marks uh, for high and low. If it's, if it's low on oil, we'll need to add a little bit or at least mention it to the customer that you need to add some oil to it. What type of oil? Uh, a lot of times it's written right on the dipstick. Um, to put what kind of oil in. Otherwise, you'll have to look at the owner's manual or service information to find out that information as to what type of oil to go in there. Next thing we're going to check is we're going to check the power steering fluid, which is over on this side. And it's a little dipstick right down here. And so we're just going to clean, clean that dipstick off and check it. And as you see, the, the power steering fluid is Looks like it's a little bit low, but it's not down to the add point yet. So that's something that we could probably tell the customer, say, hey, you need, might need to put a little bit of uh, power steering fluid in there. Um, 
The next thing we're going to do is we're going to check the uh, transmission fluid. Now the transmission fluid is this dipstick back over here. Okay, with the engine running, we're going to pull the dipstick and check it just like we do the engine oil. And it looks like we're right about at the ad mark, so we need to make sure we note that on the work order to let the customer know that we need to add a little bit of transmission fluid. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look through and make sure that there's no obvious issues inside the, the um, engine compartment here. So one of the things that you need to look at, uh, especially for this class, this is the engines class, one of the things that we need to look at is the belt to make sure that the belt is in good shape. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the serpentine belt and specifically at the tensioner. The tensioner is right here. Um, right here on the, the uh, engine. And so basically what we want to do is we want to make sure that the, the belt is tight. So you can check that. The other thing we need to look at is the ribs on the belt. I don't know whether you can see that down there or not, but you want to look and see if there's any cracks on the belt itself. And then just take a good look at all of the pulleys and everything that goes along with the, the serpentine belt. So the belt's in good shape. We don't need to worry about anything there. The other thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at the radiator. So we got the radiator cap here and we're going to look at the radiator hoses and the hoses are going to go right along in here and we're basically going to look for any kind of obvious leaks. Um, so we just want to do a quick visual inspection on that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to check the brake fluid and so we're just going to pop the, the top off and just take a look and make sure that we've got brake fluid in there and it's up to the top and it is. Uh, the brake fluid is a little bit dirty so we might want to recommend to the customer that they get their brakes brake fluid flushed uh, before too long. And the last thing we're going to do underneath the hood is we're going to check the battery to make sure that the battery is in um, good shape. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the terminals are good and tight and that there's not any science experiments growing on them and so you don't have any of that white stuff that you normally see on batteries and all that stuff you don't want to see any of that growing on there next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we've got enough electricity so we need to make sure the battery is is fully charged so you guys remember from your uh, electrical class um, i don't have a battery tester here at my house and so but i do have a digital volt ohm meter and so I can set the DVOM to volts, volts DC. And let me set my camera so that you can see what I'm doing here. And we'll check the battery voltage. So we're just gonna do an open circuit voltage test on the battery and we've got 12.5 volts and actually it's 12.54 and if you remember 12.6 is a fully charged battery so 12.554 is not too bad so we'll call that good we don't and the other thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we've got enough air pressure in each one of the tires so we'll check the the tires as we move around make sure that they're all up to speed so we got about 35 psi in that one which i believe is okay the other thing we want to do is we want to take a quick look at the tread and make sure that the tread is okay now i don't know whether you can see this on the camera or not but there's wear indicators they're called wear bars in the tread itself and then they're right here and when those tread bars you can see them across the tread then that means the tire is worn out the other thing you're looking for is any kind of cupping or bald spots on the side, on the inside or the outside or anything like that. So moving right along, we're taking a look at the outside of the vehicle. 
looking to see if there's any obvious damage that uh, we want to note. And we're going to check all four tires. So it's about a little over 35 PSI there. And there again, we're going to check the tire tread, make sure that we're good all the way across, and then just continue around. Now we've got some little scratches and, and marks there. Those are usually not too bad. You don't need to worry too much about that stuff. What we're looking for is mainly big dents and huge things. Now like this little door ding right here, you may want to note that on the work order just to make sure. And we got another tire here to check. We look at the tire feels pretty good. It doesn't have any cupping in it. We'll check the tire pressure. And we're about the same pressure as the other tires. I'll pick up the cap later. And we're just going to continue looking. We also want to make sure that there's no cracks in the windows or anything like that. Now there is some paint chipping here, so that might be something that, uh, that we want to look at um, or address on the, on the customer's um, work order. And we're going to continue. We've got one more tire to check here. So, and it's the same pressure as the rest of them. So tire pressure is good. Um, now, I don't know whether you can see this very well or not, but right here on the tire, you can see a little bit of feathering taking place on the edge right here. That means that this, these tires need to be rotated, so that might be something we could mention to the customers. They need to rotate their tires before too long. Now the last thing we need to check is we need to check all the lights and make sure everything works. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn on the headlights, and we'll walk around and we'll take a look at the headlights. We got headlights and park lights, everything's working. Looks like we have one that's out right here. Uh, on this side over here, it seems to be working. And let's walk around to the back. And it looks like we got bright, or tail lights back here. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the turn signals. Actually, high beams. So, looks like our high beams are working. So once we have the turn signals on, we got the front turn signal. And the back turn signal. And this goes a lot faster when you have a, a partner to sit in the driver's seat and manipulate all the controls for you. So we got a front turn signal there. Well, let's make sure we got a back turn signal. And we do. So turn signals are all working. Let's, next thing we have to check is the hazard flashers. So we got hazard flashers in the back. And we have hazard, hazard flashers in the front. And the last thing that we need to check is the brake lights. And since I'm working by myself here, I'm going to go grab a tool and we'll check the brake lights. Okay, what I've done is I've uh, installed a tool to depress the, the, brake, lever, or the brake pedal down there. 
and now we can go back and check and make sure we got brake lights. So if we look at the back of the, the vehicle, it uh, looks like we have both brake lights and the high mount brake light is working as well. So that completes our, our uh, vehicle inspection. And we're going to fill out the paperwork and make sure that everything is, uh, is good to go on that. So here's what we do is we just want to walk right down through the checklist. So windshield wiper, washer, fluid and level, uh, automatic transmission, brake fluid linings, power steering fluid, coolant recovery. Uh, so to make sure we have enough coolant in there, transaxle, engine oil level, uh, windshield um, for cracks uh, or blemishes, windshield wiper blades, horns. Uh, and by the way, the windshield wiper blades you can check while you're doing the windshield washers because if the wi if the wipers wash clean, if the if it doesn't leave any streaks or anything, we're good to go on the wiper blades. So anyway, we're just going to go through here and we're going to check all these. Now, if you remember, we had power steering fluid. So that's uh, power steering fluid right here. We want to check that with a yellow because it was kind of in the need of uh, some attention. So we'll mark that with yellow. And was and I'm trying to remember if there's anything else that was in yellow. I don't think there was. Um, so everything else seemed to be pretty good. The tires were um, about 35 PSI all the way around. So we can write 35, whoops, 5 PSI, 35 PSI, and 35 PSI. And as we walked around the vehicle, we did see a uh, door ding. And for the battery volt, uh, the battery voltage we had uh, 12.54 volts. So that's what we want to put there. And then we can go through and recommended services. Um, we can write down tire rotation because we noticed that it needed a tire rotation. We didn't look at the brakes on this one because uh, I think most of you have not had the brakes class yet, so you'll learn how to do a brake inspection in a later class. Uh, but normally you would look at the brakes and see if there's uh, a need for a brake job. Um, let's see, what else is there? So air filter, we didn't look at the air filter. Uh, that's something that we need to do. And it doesn't have a cabin filter. And so we got the rotated on, on the tires, and so that's it. That completes our vehicle inspection.